Hi there, welcome to the Mabel Mom Cave. I'm Julie Cole, co-founder of Mabel's Labels, parenting blogger and mom of six. We have a great mom cave lined up and I'm so excited to introduce you to Jane Christoffi. And Jane, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm Jane Christoffi, I'm an educational strategist. Uh, I've been an educator for almost 30 years and I work with students I help them find their direction, their strengths and their passions. And I work with them to really fulfill that uh, potential that they've got, unleash all of their great gifts. Um, I work with their parents too, to support them through the educational journey. Uh, the kids I work with are K to 12. So yeah. we work through transitions in education as well as challenges. I do some career counseling and uh, it's really exciting stuff. I totally love it. That's awesome. And Jane and I actually met a few years ago at the Blistem conference. So yes, who did. are my Blistem people out there? I really <laughs> missed that one. That yeah, we so need to great. get it back. We need, we to, need to bring Jane it back once the COVID's done too. Yeah. Um, it'll be so nice to see people in real life once again. Uh, so um, today uh, we are going to do a few giveaways. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please put them in in the in the chat because you know at the end that Nikki's going to come on. We've got Jane here, a great resource. And what we're going to be talking about is basically like keeping your kids on track and promoting personal and academic success without being a helicopter parent. And Jane actually wrote a book about that. Yes, I did. So she, yeah, oh, there it is, perfect. <laughs> so hold it up in another minute. So she has generously generously offered to give away three of her books and we are actually going to give away three of our stylish school label packs. Um, those actually I think are on sale right now too, celebrate our, celebrating our big Mabel's Labels 18th birthday this month of the whole month of March. So again, if you like and comment or leave a question, you will be entered to win one of the three stylish Mabel's Labels um, stylish combos and the um, three of the books, they're called Launch Your Kid, How to Promote Your Child's Academic and Personal Success Without Being a Helicopter Parent. And I'm really excited to talk about this because yes. I have a lot of kids mm -hmm. with a lot of learning differences, some totally neurotypical, some not. And mine are grades six, grades nine and 10, and first, second, and third year university. So That's I've amazing. got kids in grade school, high school, university. We're all over the shop. <laughs> We are all over the shop. So, um, Jane, let's just jump in. What do you, first off, what do you find um, parents are most, COVID or not, what do you find parents are most concerned about with their kids and their education? Is it academic success? success? Are they worrying about their kids being stressed out? Are they worrying about transitions? Are they worrying about their executive functioning? What do you find parents are coming to you for? Parents come to me because they think that their kids aren't going to cut it. They're not going to, you know, make it through school. They're not going to get into the next phase, you know, post-secondary, maybe the job world. They they worry their kids are apathetic, you know, lacking interests and skills at school. They're not happy with some of the marks. So this is why I see parents. Okay. Many of them come to me as well with high-functioning kids who want to take things to the next level. Uh, so I see everything. But um, right now, I think it's really mental health. There's a lot right. of mental health. Yeah. Right. And do you find when parents come, because I mean, my experience is, you know, I've seen friends like kind of freaking out about their kids and worrying about their yeah. kids. And I'm like, you got a great kid. They're doing right. fine. What are you yeah. getting your nickels and that about? Like, mm -hmm. do you find parents, I mean, not to, you know, I mean, just in general, not just your clients, but in general, are we, are we worrying too much about this? Like, are the kids all right? I think the kids are fine. I think there are a lot of trends. There's things happening that we didn't have when we were teenagers, you know, social media, there's a lot of opportunities to get drugs and, and other things that can be addictive. There's way too much information available online for kids at young ages to access. But I do think parents need to see the big picture. They need to have more faith in teachers, in their kids, in the whole process. And believe also that making mistakes is part of growing up. It's part of learning and becoming resilient and strong and smart for the phases that you need for, for your later phases, for, for the things that come later. 
totally. I always say like, I, I don't mind my kids making mistakes. I expect my teenagers to screw up. I don't want to follow them on an app. I want them to go and do things and, 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 and learn because I feel like if they can serve, solve the little problems now, they'll be able to solve the bigger problems later. And honestly, I don't like, I love my kids, but I do eventually want them all to move out. And I don't Absolutely. want to be solving their problems when they're 30. Mm -hmm. I want them to be able to do that. Yeah, and we need them to make the pro make the mistakes at home while they're under our roof, so that we can help them, support them, you know, spy on them a bit, watch from the sidelines. I call myself home base. I want my kids to go out, like can hide and go seek, go do your thing. I'm always here. I want to watch them self regulate under my roof, whether it's sleep routines or figuring out, you know, what snacks to choose, what breakfast to make, homework routines. I want them to figure out as much of that as, as possible on their own. And because often I find, cause people are like, well, how do you punish your children or whatever? I actually don't do a lot of like, I'm not sure that they've ever been like punished, punished. Like I've never grounded a child. Cause I find the natural consequence, yes. what yeah. happens is more than enough punishment. I like it's, it, it beats me yeah, at it. Right. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Some parents don't allow for the natural consequences to, to occur. That would be the whole helicopter parenting uh, outcome. You know, helicopter parents, they hover overhead, they watch over every single experience and step of the way, especially with regards to school. They want to rule out all the problems that could potentially happen. They want to make decisions for their kids. So if, if parents are helicopter parenting, the natural consequences won't as easily occur. And don't get me wrong, helicopter parents, they're full of love. They want the best for their kids. They, they want the best lives ever, um, but they're actually doing damage. Um, so what, I mean, if, if we have any viewers who are watching and you have some questions about your own parenting, please, please chime in and we'll, uh, we, we can let, um, we can have that conversation. Um, but say a parent does want to maybe rain in their helicopter parenting and team, but they can't help themselves. They, they do love their child and they're maybe mixing up love with, you know, even that snow plowing parent, right? The ones who clear mm -hmm. the path. Yeah. Because I mean, at the end of the day, if we do too much helicoptering, we feel like we're saving them, but we're not setting them up to save themselves, right? Absolutely. Are there any sort of strategies or like if you have parents who wanted to kind of rein it in a bit, how, how can they practice? Are there small steps? I think they just need to really take a close look, put themselves under the microscope, their parenting style. They need to be self-aware and constant reminders. Just zip it up, you know? Oh, yeah. Don't make that phone call if your child wasn't just, invited to the birthday party. Don't contact the teacher if there's a bad mark. That's not your problem. You don't belong in that. Yeah. Your child has to deal with it. And if they're not included at a birthday party, it's really, really hard as a parent to watch that but that's life you know? you know what it is hard and um but i think like my way has always been you know what we don't get invited to everything and yeah. i had a lot of people because i have so many kids and they're close in age they'd be like is it like should we invite all of them or, or is it should we invite the girls i'm like no just mm -hmm. invite the kid who's the actual friend the other yeah. kids get their chances too i would encourage like it, it's yeah. okay. And, and then I also role model, if I don't get invited to something, I'll be like, oh, shoot, I would have loved to go out yeah. with the girls tonight, but I wasn't on the email list. So next time, yeah. you know, everybody can't get invited to everything. Yeah. And then you focus on other people. You find ways to come out of that feeling of despair, disappointment. It's life. And if you're protecting your kid at this phase or at this stage, what are they going to do when they're in their 20s and they get their first rejection or their first disappointment, you know? Yeah. The sooner the better. The sooner the and better. I, do, I try the same same with school too. You know, like I, I just try to Jane. I, I if they have a bad mark, I encourage them. If they have a problem with it, go talk to the teacher. Yeah. Go talk to the go self advocate. Like self advocacy skills. Like, you know, that's what's really gonna get them through. I've got yeah. friends who are university professors, and they're like, we get calls from parents. I'm like, yeah. I don't think my parents even saw my Not transcript. Cool. I don't even know they knew where I was. Yeah. No, self-advocacy is so important, another another life skill. And, and that's a learning skill that's on the report card. Kids need to self-advocate. And if they've got parents doing all the talking for them, they're not going to learn. It is the hardest skill, I find, yeah. to draw out, to nurture in kids. I've yeah. seen that as a teacher and a mom. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And also, like, I find for me, because, you know, some of my kids have executive function. I have a child on autism spectrum. I have a kid uh, who's ADD, ADHD, LD, and gifted. So quite, um, 
you know, a, a complicated profile. And yeah. I do find that I have to, you know, it, it's like you have six kids or however many kids you have, you have to parent them all a little differently because they're all yeah. different. They have different needs. So how I relate to like my neurotypical kids teachers is completely different to how I relate with the teachers of my kids who are not neurotypical. Yeah. My, literally my neurotypical kids, I say to the teacher, hey, you're never going to hear from me. If there's a problem, though, I want to know about it. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, problems, right? yeah. And, and depending on your child's level of need, yeah. they have to become a self-advocate as soon as possible. You know, my daughter's type one diabetic and she was diagnosed when she was 10 years old. As soon as possible, she had to take control over that. And she needed to talk to teachers and adults in her life other than her parents. I can't always be the person doing that. She needs to survive, you know. Um, keep breathing. And so the sooner we can get our kids, whatever their need is, to own it and to speak up and say, this is what I want and need, the better for them. I think about that too with the allergy kids and how they have to be yeah. able to be so in tune with, you know, what their situation around them. They have to be able to speak up. They have to be able yeah. to advocate. It's, it's life or death stuff. And you know what? I've had a friend um, go through the same diagnosis with your daughter. That's a, Jane, that's a big one. And it, it is. A big one. Big, it is big a big one, and, and the kids yeah. grow up early. Bless their little hearts. Yes. Seriously, they yes. do. They sure do. They sure do. Okay, so if parents want to support their kids and keep them on yep. track, um, as even we're kind of slowly moving back to normal, what are some ways that we can do it? Okay, so I have different advice for kids and teens. So okay. I would say, first of all, we need to have faith. Okay? okay. Believe that everything's going to be okay. We're all in this together. Um, and teachers are trained professionals to get kids caught up. They know how to pick up where kids are and fill in all the gaps. Teachers know what they're doing. They also have lived through the pandemic as well. So they understand. This is not a typical year. So how can we expect the benchmarks to be met or curriculum outcomes, like expectations to be fulfilled in the same way as a typical year. I think that it's going to be very gray, like flexible, okay? So have faith, let's look, put a little asterisk beside 2020 and 2021. The other thing is, is I would say mental health, you know, uh, continue to do all the self-care things like good nutrition, uh, good sleep, good exercise, pets are wonderful, um, therapy for everybody. Um, in terms of catching up, like literally, I would say read daily with your kids. And there's a lot of opportunities um, online. I, I'm not encouraging a ton of more screen time, but the reality is, is that, um, there's a lot of resources online that are free and excellent. There's a new one that's just come out. It's, it's called Bonogi. It's a free platform and app right now that's available it's out of Sweden. And this spring, while kids are catching up, they're offering it to everybody globally. And it's, um, it's a great educational resource that sort of evens the playing field for students, helps them solidify their learning, and it gamifies it. So it's really fun. All That's cartoons. Awesome. They drop that link in. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So that would be a way to, you know, after a lesson, go home and just listen to the five minute video. There's, they have everything in the curriculum for Ontario and beyond. Uh -huh. uh, so that would be a tip, but there's lots of other platforms out there. You can go into, you know, if, you're, if your child is having trouble with, with a specific math problem, they can just put that into YouTube and find somebody walking through it and, and learn it easily. So if you're looking for actual support academically, you can find it online. There's lots of these resources as well. You can get a tutor. I, I'm totally for outsourcing when needed. Good stuff. And you know, it's interesting you say this because I do think a lot of parents, I mean, some kids do well with online learning and some kids don't. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, I've had a couple of my kids, I'm like, they excel at this. And then some yeah. of them I'm like, oh man, they got to get back in that classroom. And I've seen yeah. that with families. They, they send some of their kids back and they take yeah. some of their kids home during this, right? And like, again, we have to parent differently based on our It's true. Journeys. But I think that is something that people worry about is um, my kid's not a great online learner, and now I'm sending them back to a classroom where probably all the kids were great online learners, so we're far, we're far behind. But I, I really value what you say about trusting your teachers. They're professionals. 
and they will they will assign their resources and allocate their resources as needed and they will get those kids on the same page yeah no one's going to be penalized for you know not keeping up during the pandemic and you know i know parents are worried about things like reading like child should be a reader by such and such an age but really and truly let's just all get through the pandemic healthy and sane and we can worry about all these benchmarks later anything specific for the teenagers i got a bunch of those <laughs> i would say with the teenagers because i have two i have a 19 year old and a 17 year old and just a little plug for mabel's labels i think i was one of your very first customers Yay! <laughs> you were at that. yeah because i mean we're we're 18 now so we yeah. probably love, love the stuff still love it but anyway so the teenagers need autonomy they need control over their lives they need to be able to make decisions every day small ones they need to feel like they have control so i would say let them run their show and as long as they're producing the bare minimum of what needs to get done you stay off their back make sure they're getting a lot of sleep make sure that they're getting a lot of social connection eating well i would say check in with them every day say how are you doing on a scale of one to ten if 10 is I've never felt better, this is the best day ever, and zero is I could barely get out of bed, I feel horrible in every way, get them to rank it, because grumpy teens sometimes don't want to give you a lot of um, adjectives and so on to describe how they are. But a number one out of 10 is great. So I think checking in with them, and also checking in with them about school, you know, without bugging them. Yeah, I found like most effective with my guys was not being like, okay, you're going to do your homework at this time. You don't, I'm turning the Wi Fi off until instead saying it's kind of like you say, give them control. I'd be like, if I had a kid, if I, and I have had a kid who was terrible at doing homework, whatever. Somehow it's like way university now. So, um, but he is executive functioning things, and I have him working with an executive functioning coach. So, Perfect. They have, again, Perfect. that's not because it would drive me crazy and I would kill him. So yeah. I let somebody else deal with that, right? Um, but I, I found that with him, I just had to be like, can you tell me your plan? Just share with me what, what is your yeah. plan? I know I, I know you told me an essay due next yeah. week. Can you chuck it out? Just, so not me telling him, him telling exactly, me. Exactly, exactly. And when I have stuff that I want my kids to do, I'll say to them, I need X, Y, and Z. I need your help with these things. I'd, I'd really appreciate it if you could have it done by Sunday night. And this is yeah. maybe after school on Friday. Yeah, They own it. They can decide yeah. when they want to do it. I don't remind. If they don't do it, Monday morning I might say, geez, I'm, I'm sort of bummed. It's like, what mm -hmm. happened with that? And then we kind of revisit. But it's just, you know, they're part of the team. I need their help. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I give them lots of flexibility so that they feel like they are empowered to make the decision of, of how and when. They're going to do the stuff that I've chosen for them to do. Parenting teens can be tough slog. Yep. I've, I've had a pretty easy go of it, but I, I, it can be. It can you know, be. I you're actually do, find, you're dealing with. Yeah, it's tough. I find toddlers harder. I like teenagers better than toddlers, but anyway. Oh, yeah. We all well, have our I, thought, I didn't think I loved the teen stage because I'm a baby person. I loved all those babies. But you know what? I've actually enjoyed every episode school age. I love teenagers. Now I've. On my second just to 20, so I have a 20 year old and a 21 year old. Like, I get something like 20 minutes. Ah, it's nuts, it's nuts. Um, I want to ask one more question before we go and see if anybody has comments, the viewers. Motivation. Do you think motivation is something that is innate or can be taught? I'm just asking this because I have kids who are 15 months apart and one is so motivated, I never have to check it, whatever. And the other is like just. Okay, so I don't, I, I don't know the answer to innate versus nature versus nurture, but I can give you some tips about how to promote self-motivation. So we all have trouble with motivation, right? Like whether it's fitness routines or starting a new habit, right? Kids are no different, but I would say the main thing to do as parents to motivate our kids is to get out of their way. We have to just zip it up. We have to stop trying to get involved. They need to want to do something if they're going to do it. And so how do you get them to want to? Well, they need to have a little bit of success in something before they're going to want to do it more. And so there's competency. Uh, there's autonomy. Another piece is flow. So that's when you get into the flow of something. That's when you've already kind of um, 
gotten into the groove of whatever task you're doing. But once you're in flow, you become very motivated. Um, the key piece for a teen or a child to motivate them is to give them control over it. And you know what I've noticed? Um, I've been you know, doing reading and I talk, obviously I talked to tons and tons of, of parents. But Jane, I found like with the teens, sometimes they almost get punished for the behavior we're looking for. So as an example, you want your teen to come out of their bedroom and sit with the family and watch a show, or you want them to come and sit at the dinner table without them. So they come and do it. So maybe they just do it. And then you say things like, nice of you to join us. Or, oh, you got out of your room. Mm -hmm. And I think that can be really defeating. So I think it's yeah. really important to be like, afterwards, be like, oh, it was so great having you yeah, here. It was absolutely. great seeing you. That was so much fun. You really bring a lot of life to this family. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't like it if somebody said that to me. Oh, like, that would feel yeah. awful. Yeah. But I also can relate with the whole thing about competency and so on. Like I, I'm a phys ed teacher. That's my background. I pick up sports pretty easily. I have not been able to pick up golf and it really bugs me. But I, and so I'm not motivated to play it. I'm not motivated to improve or anything. I don't even want to do it. But I know that if I keep at it, I'll have that little bit of success and I'll probably be super motivated. Like, oh, I love golf. But it, you have to have a little bit of success before you can um feel motivated the other piece that i haven't mentioned is um something being relevant the kids have to be connected and, and see see purpose in it yeah. and yeah, they very often don't with chores and with schoolwork. so that's another problem yeah yeah i found my guy inspector when he was younger he didn't i i, I couldn't figure out why he well what we realized was, was he he didn't figure out that doing the unit test was building towards the next thing, which would mean he could take academic courses in high school, which meant if he did this, then he could go to university. And if he did that, then he could, like, I think sometimes we tell our kids, you can do whatever you want, but they can't. Mm -hmm. They can't do whatever they want. <laughs> like, I can't just be like, I want to be a Hollywood star and be a Hollywood star, or I want to be a doctor. Well, then you got to do well in science. You have yeah. to, you have to, you have to make a plan. You gotta make that you gotta plan. Make the plan. I mean, all this telling your kids they can be whatever they want is a bunch of well, well with with hard work. With hard yeah, work, yeah. you know. Yeah, but you don't just get to make a wish and that happens, right? Absolutely. I would say hope is not a strategy. Um like okay, that. let's go to Nikki and see if any of our viewers have chimed in and have questions for Jane. I have enjoyed this conversation so much. I could go. Me on. too. Hello. Hi. So we do have a lot of very interested people in there in the comment section sharing their stories, which we appreciate. And um, we did get a couple of questions. The first one is about mental health and how do you balance mental health issues when it comes to ac academic success? Well, I'm an educator. I'm not a, a mental health um, expert. But I would say that mental health comes first. You know, health is the most crucial piece of uh, showing up for school, whether it's physical or mental. And so if a child is not functioning in a healthy way and can't cope, there's going to have to be accommodations made. And this, you know, you need to talk to the teacher and explain it. I know there's a lot of kids in post-secondary who've really been suffering. And the, the schools, the, the universities wanna help kids, you know, stay in the programs. So they're, they're doing a lot of extra uh, accommodations, a lot of support for these kids so that they can continue with their pursuit of their goals. Um, I think it's going to be very situation individual uh, dependent, but certainly mental health comes first. And, and there are supports out there, you just have to ask. Yeah, find the resources and use them. I know for me, like normally at university, you know, a kid will take five courses a term. I'm like, no, you're doing four, it's enough. Yeah. You know what, if we take an extra half year, and, and that that comes, and I just want to acknowledge a bit of privilege that comes with being able to say you can take an extra half year, uh, mm -hmm. because not everybody can do that. Um, so, you know, that's one of those things that we were able to do. And I'm like, if you're at school for an extra half year, that's fine because really your mental health comes first. And I find it particularly hard for kids or for parents who have kids who are perfectionists mm -hmm. because this COVID time has been very hard on the perfectionists and so, that really impacts their mental health. And I mean, for me, I just role model being imperfect. I'm doing yeah. a good job. 
None of my kids are perfectionists. I've got one who's probably close and, and I can see the impact that has on her. And I, I like, dude, I'm like, lower the bar. You've got to lower the bar. This is crazy, right? And she's driving up. And so I, I do find like a lot of, I say this probably every mom gave that this parenting gig is all about the role modeling. Yeah, it really is. I actually talk about that in my book. Okay. So it's all about role modeling. If you want high functioning kids, if you want to promote, you know, good learning and life skills and so on, your kid is not going to be successful in school if their room is a disaster. If they come home and their backpack is like blowing up with papers and stuff, they're not getting good marks. They have to have that stuff done first. And they're going to learn that from mom and dad. You know, if you're on time, if you're organized, if you've got good habits in place, the kids are going to constantly be learning. That's that. why those executive functioning skills are key, right? Yeah, that's yeah, for sure. Nikki, what else is going on yeah. out there? Uh, another great question we got was um, someone wanting to know your opinions on if there is a polite way to point out to a friend if they are being a helicopter parent, or is that something you just have to leave alone? Um, I would say, Julie, why don't you start with this? Okay, one? I've got a few things because okay. I've actually had like, you know, I have had some experiences with this and I've actually had friends be like, oh, I just need to chill. Like I remember once we were at a hockey tournament and the little girls were like, I don't know, 10 or 11. And for anybody whose kids play hockey, what you do is you're at the hotel, all the parents are in the party room, eating, having a beer or whatever. And then the kids generally are out playing manhunt or hide and seek throughout the, and this poor mom was like, I just, I'm not comfortable with my kid doing that. I'm like, she's like, but I don't want her missing out on the fun. And I was like, what about this? What if you say she goes for 10 minutes and then checks back in here every 10 minutes? Why don't we try doing something like that? Yeah. But I found that it's been more rather than telling them, like the parents will ask me, how can I like conversation? How can I be, how can I be as careless as you with my children? <laughs> yeah. I will tell you one thing, one funny story that happened to me. And it wasn't so much about helicoptering, it was about not following through. So I had a friend over and she had her little kid over. And the little kid was doing some stuff that mom wasn't happy with. And she, mom kept saying, oh, if you do that one more time, we're going to go home. And she'd be like, I told you. If you and, and she did like three or four times. By the fourth time, I was like, it happened. And I was like, oh, gosh, it was so nice having you all here. But I guess you're going home now. Let's pack up your things. Hopefully, if you listen to mom next time, you can come over again. And my friend was like, oh, my God. Like, you're, you're throwing me out. I'm just like, you said it. I can't listen to you say it again. <laughs> my house, my rules. <laughs> but I, I could not listen. No to kidding. Anymore, so I just packed up and said, we'll see you next time. <laughs> I love that. So for me, as an educator, I'm direct with parents a lot. Like I'll say, you know, I had one parent recently complaining about her son didn't see eye to eye with his teacher. So I'm an educational consultant. I'm working with a family in an SOS situation. And I sort of been thinking, well, that's that's life. Like, I love it when kids, like this isn't the exact conversation, but my message is I love it when kids don't like their teacher because that's their first experience of having a rotten neighbor or a terrible mother-in-law or, or a brutal boss. coworker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's people in your life that you're not gonna like. So learn to deal with it when you're young. The other question you could ask a friend who's demonstrating helicoptering you can say, you know, what's the worst thing that could happen here? And maybe just kind of walk through that scenario. That's really Usually good. it's not that bad. I think that's really good because I think we can kind of catastrophize, yeah. right? And we build things up in our minds. Sometimes we just need that person to be like, hey, like, let's share the worry balloon. Let's bring that back yeah. down. And you're like, oh, you're right. That wasn't such a big deal. Sometimes we can get in our heads a bit, right? Yeah. Love it. All right. Well, thank you so much for that. And I'll put all the links in the comments of uh, where we uh, can get the book and any other, you know, things that we talked about today. Thank you so much for, uh, for being on the show today. Definitely. And all the comments and questions, if you liked and commented, again, you're entering to win the three uh, Mabel's Labels packs, the three books. Uh, written by Jane right there. And also, Jane, maybe because people will watch this, this will live on our Facebook page. So people might watch it in a couple of hours or tonight when the kids yep. are in bed, I might have questions. So I'm hoping maybe you can pop on tomorrow or something. Sure, I'd love it. I actually, I have a promo code too for your mom oh. cave viewers. I've got a 25% off the book with a Good. link. Yeah, and I think- We'll throw that in the link. Yep. 
It's a okay. great resource. Pick it up. It's all kinds of simple strategies, easy tips you can start using today to make sure your kids are successful. Thank you so much for joining us. I Everybody love being here. watching, thank you for joining for this really fun conversation. And we will see you at the next Mabel Mom Cave. Bye, Julie. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. Jane.